Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Thursday, the 1st of August. Uh, I'm Derek Clark, and we're joined by a full squad, Joshua Barry and Stevie Clifford. Uh, first of all, apologies, we're slightly late this morning, folks. That is my uh, that is a problem on my end, but uh, we have solved the technical difficulties. And as you all say, good things come to those who wait. So, Joshua, how's it going? Uh, good, yeah, good to be here on with you both. And, uh, yeah, some some... Exciting Rangers news to talk about, which is always welcome in a, in a summer like this. So we're uh, looking forward to getting into it. Absolutely. Stevie Clifford also joins us this morning. How's it going, Stevie? I think I'm probably fresher than you boys, but yeah, I'm good <laughs> to be here. And uh, yeah, it uh, looks like it's a nice enough morning. Hopefully it'll be a nice day and plenty to talk about. Yeah, we're going to be... Uh... Start a team night out last night, didn't we? In, uh, yes. in Glasgow, uh, we were there um, alongside. Uh, good to see uh, Davy Edgar, uh, Martin uh, Ramsey, and uh, Adam Thornton as well. Johnny was joined us uh, as well. So uh, yeah, uh, I was I was a little bit drunk, as uh, David Brent once said. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we're back fresh this morning to talk all things Rangers. Uh, before we do that, just a quick word for our podcast sponsors, MPH Boilers. Uh, if you're needing a new boiler, folks, then these are the guys to call the family-run business covering all of mainland Scotland, the award-winning company as well. They've got those brilliant Wiesman boilers on offer. Uh, you know the drill by now. The, the links are in the description below. Right, let's uh, talk transfers then, Joshua, because uh, emerged yesterday, probably late morning, that Rangers were closing in on a deal for Robin Proper. He was undergoing a medical yesterday and uh, could be set to make his debut at the weekend. We expect that uh, deal to be finalised uh, in the not too distant future. 30 years of age, uh, FC20 captain and uh, defender. It looks like a, a sort of ready-made replacement for uh, Cold Connor Goldson, is it not? Yeah, um, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, Derek Clement said, I think it was in his Rangers TV interview, that Rangers had agreements tied up with a couple of players or, or several players, I believe, was the, the phrase he used. And it was just about the outgoings happening first to trigger the incomings. And certainly if you look at uh, Vaclav Cherny and then as well, Robin Proper, both of these players seem to, to fit into that camp. He's 30 years old, going to be 31 soon. And I know that has provoked a bit of conversation online. Rangers clearly need experience this summer uh, as well as as the really young players that they've brought in. The first six players that they brought in, if you include Oscar Cortez in that, and disclude Liam Kelly, obviously, because he uh, he's, he's a goalkeeper, a backup goalkeeper. I think the average age was, was about 20 and a half. So it was clear, Derek, that Rangers have needed to add a few ready now players to that complement as well. And, and there's no coincidence that once the, the news has come out about Cherney and Robin Proper, um, the, the back end of that move has has happened pretty swiftly. You'll be on less wages than Connor Goldson. I think it's an interesting comparison, which we can get into talking about today. He's played a lot on the left-hand side for 20 last season. They finished third, had one of the best defensive records in the league. 30 years old, I think he's had ambitions of, of playing abroad and that plays into this move as well. Quite a late developer, it seems, in terms of, of his career, but with a very good reputation. I think generally you get a sense, a lot of a, a lot of a sense in the transfer um, with, with the fans and, and people who watch the, the club that the player is moving from. And if you look at the reaction from the, the FC20 camp about losing Robin Proper, that tells you probably quite a lot about the, the stature of defender that Rangers will sign. Obviously, always an unknown when it, when a player comes into a club. We've, we've seen a fair few Eredivisie Air, transfers and not go as planned at Ibrox in the last couple of years. But if you look at the, the profile of what Rangers need in there, they've needed someone clearly there to come in and be the, the first choice centre-back in there, especially since Goldson has left. Balogun, Davies, Suter and Ciala, you know, none of these players are the one that you're going to pin your defence on, really, the, the centre of your defence over the next few months. So it makes sense to, to get in that experienced player who can play, who can, who can form the spine of your defence. And, and I guess the interesting question is, is he going to play on the left-hand side or is he going to play in the right? And does that depend on more incomings at centre-back or, or is that going to be the full complement for the season? You happy with this signing, Stevie? Yeah. So I said yesterday, Derek, that I was quite happy with or more positive about um, where we were heading. I thought that Cherney was of the right standard. I thought that he was the kind of first-team player that we needed. Man, I was looking forward to that. Proper. It was funny, wasn't it? Because I said to you yesterday that we'd be linked with some really good um, centre-back names and things like that. We were looking forward to seeing 
how that turned out, but this moved really, really fast, and it's um, and it seems like it's an interesting one. We were linked earlier in the week with his actual centre back partner, weren't we? There were some rumours going on about potentially Rangers moving for a boy at twenty called Hilgers. So yeah. that was a that was an interesting one, and this one came um, a wee bit left field, which is always good, as Joshua talked about. You know, it's uh, the old kind of. Goldson went and it's a ready-made deal, ready to go. So, from what I know of him and what I've researched yesterday, so I can't, I won't sit here and say to people that yeah, I know all about him and I've seen him before. That's not true. But yesterday, what everybody seems to say about him is he's a real leader at the back, somebody that will take charge and organise. Good in the air, good in the tackle, strong, um, lacks a wee bit of pace. So mm-hmm. that's something. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. I'm hopeful that he's going to be another that's the same level as Vaclav Cherny that we can um, that we can build into being first team signings. Now I said, Derek, that I thought we were four or five away. You know, that's a couple eating into it. So I, I still think we need another. You know, three, four. That would be ideal. And all of a sudden, football changes really quickly because all of a sudden we were looking at our team thinking. A lot of work to do. Now you're looking at a team thinking, right, okay, this is good. It's on the right lines. It's not mm-hmm. happened as quickly as anybody would have hoped. I think that's fair. But I really like this one. It, it makes sense. As as Joshua says, he's he's coming in on a really sensible deal. We basically sold Connor Goldson and saved, you know, two years worth of wages for him, you know, which is a lot of money. And then we've got a transfer fee in with him, which we've, you know, spent then on his replacement, more or less, and brought them in at wages that are a lot less than what we were paying out before. So I think it's a really sensible deal and that kind of thing. And you're never not going to know how good it is until the player plays, but I'm certainly excited about this one. The right profile and uh, the right kind of qualities we're looking for. Derek, you see just on his age as well, he, he's yeah. played, he's not someone who's played like, the, he's 30, well, he's 30 about to turn 31. Um, but I think that late developer is an important point because, you know, we spoke recently about how Clinton Inzial is 20 years old, but he's played no professional football. Mohamed Diamandi is 22 years old, but he arrived at Rangers with 150 games. So age obviously is an important factor in football, but the amount of games that you've played and where you are, I guess, um, in your career also matters somewhat as well. And just, I, I think Stevie raises a really good point there, which is something that's more behind the scenes and a little bit less spoken about. But if you consider how, how much Rangers have spent on wages in the last couple of years, we all know that that wage bill has been way too high and it needs to be restructured. But also how how the, the amount of money that has been spent on players sitting in the stand, the amount of money that has been spent on injured players, the amount of money on um, contractual agreements, as Stevie says there, that would have been paid to, to Goldson, for example, who we know is one of the highest earners in the squad over the next two years. So that is in the background. W- w- one of the factors I think that is really important about this window that Rangers have to get right as well. It's not just about trying to replace um, you know, X amount a week here with X amount a week there. It's taken down the whole, what was a really inflated squad bill, um, uh, wage bill, sorry, uh, over the course because that is a, a key part of squad building that has got Rangers into the situation they are and they need to fix it to to get out of the situation that, that they've been in this summer and, and some of the outgoings that you've you've seen them manage to get that amount of, those amount of wages off the books, that's really important as well when you look not just to this window, but I think the window's coming forward. I've heard a lot as well, sorry, can I just say yeah. just a, a point on this? I've heard a lot of people say, you know, it's the wrong age profile and mm-hmm. it's the wrong kind of type of signing because you won't be able to sell them on and stuff like that. I don't agree with this because you basically found a centre half who matches everything that you potentially need. You've got to trust the manager and Coppin to identify that they've got the right ability, which we'll see in time, obviously. But you're not paying £6 million for this boy at 30, turning 31 next month. You're paying you know, best part of one and a half million maximum we're, we're hearing for, for this boy. And it's a very low risk. If you get three years out of him of solid football, then it's, it's a perfect sign. You know, that's not a lot of money. It might be for us, but it's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of it. And you're not paying him, you know, an overinflated contract. You're paying him a good wage. You're paying him at a good fee. So it's, it's different from, in my opinion, spending too much money on a guy at that age and profile 
And I think that's what makes it different. And that was what the point I was wanting to make, that not everybody we buy this summer is going to be with a view to making a profit and selling on. The squad needs first-team players. The squad needs that right profile. So I really think that that negates that argument slightly with this one. Did he go straight into the team on Saturday, Joshua? Probably because, well, you're starting Clinton and Seal, I think, at left centre back, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's, he's laughing um, away there. And, uh, got a bit of stick over the last couple of days for that. Yeah, but, um, yeah he's, he's, he's good enough to start for me. Yeah, uh, um, Allen proper at the back, please. Yeah, well, the, the Champions League squad, I believe, has to be submitted today. It is, I think it is the 1st of August. I'm kind of losing track. Um, I would expect uh, that the, the noises have been uh, that. You know he, he could make his debut at, at Tyne Castle, so I certainly would. I wouldn't think he's not a young player who is probably going to be overawed by the the prospect. Still a big game to come into, but the, the, this off the pitch element of the fact that he's been a captain is really important because personality matters so much in 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 every football club. And one thing that I think you can really see intentionally, Rangers have tried to restructure or are trying to restructure this uh, this summer is there is the leadership in the dressing room and proper certainly. It will come in to, to try and fill that void. I guess the question is, Derek, does he play on the left or does he play on the right? We can maybe speak a bit about Connor Goldson and how the, you know, because Connor Goldson's 31 and he's been here for six years until he left this week for uh, uh, Aris Limassol. What is the difference between him as a, a player and proper as a player and, and how does that fit in maybe to what Clement's trying to do? If, if you were to ask me now, I think it might be Suter on the right and, and proper on the left if I was if I was totally guessing. Leon Balogun's probably earned a place in there on the basis of, of, of last season and we saw him play at right centre-back and Suter at left centre-back at, at points as well. I definitely think it would probably be two of proper uh, Balogun and Suter if you were to ask me now on Saturday. Interesting. Uh, just for those uh, asking about the Champions League draw, Stephen with the point, can we get this lad into the Champions League squad? Yeah, it will be added. Just to uh, clarify that, uh, Rangers, the deadline is 11pm uh, tonight, but they can add two new players to the squad by 11pm the day before the first leg. Um, and so that is uh, the situation with regards to the Champions League registration. Rangers will be playing at Dinamo Kiev, uh, who Pete Partizan Belgrade in their own backyard 3-0 last night to win 9-2 on aggregate. So uh, that's going to be a tough uh, test for Rangers, Stevie. Well, we knew that anyway, even before yeah. they've spanked Partizan, didn't they? So, yeah, it's going to be a tough test and there's a, there's, it's going to be a, a big challenge for Rangers. It might be a step too far this early. If mm. the, the window had progressed, say we were doing this business, I think, at the start of July, I think everybody would be a lot more kind of uh, excited but I still think and I've said for quite a while that there's there's big business to be done for Rangers and I, I still think that I still think there'll be a lot more outs and a lot more ins so um, it might just come slightly too late for this fixture but we can go and give it our best and just see how it comes. I don't think Derek I don't know a lot about Kiev but I do know that they're very good going forward as, as nine goals against Partizan would tell you but I'm not sure that they're entirely steadfast at the back either so it could be one where um it's, it's quite an exciting open game open game so we've just got to you know there's a lot of money at stake for this one um even if we didn't make it in the champions league proper just going through this round is enough for you i think it's a 4.8 million pound parachute payment if you get into the next round past this one before the actual champions league so there's a lot to play for um, and I know that it doesn't matter if we go out at this level with regards to continuing European football, understand that, but it's certainly a, a high-value game for Rangers and one they'll be looking for you know, progress in, but it is a tough ask. Yeah, uh, CGM55 so just on proper. We won't be on 20s Christmas card list yet. They are not happy at uh, selling their captain, I can tell you that for sure. Um, if you want to have a little bit of insight into what we can expect from Robin Proper, I spoke to, uh, we had Gus back on at the 20 podcaster. You remember I spoke to him on Monday uh, to get a bit of insight into Vaclav Cherny and we had a wee chat about Sam Lammers while he was speaking yesterday evening uh, to me about uh, Robin Proper. So if you want to find a little bit more about him, uh, then go and check it out, folks. It's on the Rangers Review Extra channel. Uh, and Callum's joined uh, the Extra channel as well, and, and he gets in touch. Uh, I'll pop this message up. He says, lovely and very unexpected to bump into you all last night. Big fan of the channel. 
four lads in heart and hand. Keep up the brilliant work on YouTube, all the socials and the website. It was great to meet you too, Callum. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you for the kind words and to uh, join in at the channel as well. That is uh, very kind of you to do so. Um, right, so proper look to be on his way. Joshua, Rangers still... For you, where would you like to see them strengthen? Can you see them strengthening before the trip to Tynecastle on Saturday? Well, what day is it? Thursday? Maybe not. Um, obviously, the, the, the Champions League squad has to be submitted today. I think you're allowed to make two changes in between the, the third yeah. round and the playoff, if, if obviously if Rangers are to make it there. Um, the, the, the first game is on Tuesday as well, so it's a really quick turnaround. I know it's an early kickoff at Tynecastle, at Tynecastle but a really quick turnaround. I mean, the starting eleven is starting to look a, a bit stronger, and we'll obviously speak a little bit more length about uh, kind of our predicted teams for Tynecastle as we as the football finally rolls back around on Saturday. Vaclav Cherny is clearly your first choice player on the right. Oscar Cortez is clearly your first choice on the left. At the moment, Baron and Diamande with Raskin returning from injury, you still need depth in there. Up top, a lot depends on what happens with Cyril Dessers. If Rangers can get the money they deem, they deem acceptable for him, we spoke at length there about his age, the fact he's 29. If you're able to get back most, if not all, the money you paid for him last summer, it's a good time to sell. Don't expect Danilo to be the one who leads the line in, in Edinburgh. I think we've all seen in pre-season it's going to take him a little bit of time to get back to full uh, sharpness. The number 10 position, I think, is, is, is one of the key areas you look at uh, the, the moment in particular, especially because of the Todd Campwell news and in behind Tom Lawrence at the moment. We've seen Alex Lowry at points in pre-season, but, but not that much. It'll be Lawrence you'd expect who plays in these big games going forward over the next couple of weeks. There's still a lot of, of work to do. I agree with Stevie. I, I think you're still, if we if we take Cherney and, and proper, you're still maybe three first-team players away if, if you're being slightly generous and if you want to be slightly more ambitious, a couple more. Um, if you're being greedy in this transfer window, but Rangers have already, uh, if you include proper, they're going to have brought in eight players in, in this transfer window, which is obviously just one less than they brought in in the entirety of last summer. So still areas to strengthen, but if you've got proper and churning in, and if they are both ready to, to make an impact quickly, because we know of the five players who joined earlier in the summer, Connor Barron is really the only one who's going to be in that same boat. That, that can be important because Rangers cannot afford to, for all the good work, they might still be doing in the window for the fact that players might still arrive towards the end of the window. This Hearts game and this double level, uh, double header against Dynamo Kiev, you need to, you, you can't afford to obviously close without saying lose them. You need to be in a good position come the end of the window to make sure that if and when more players arrive, they're coming into a season that still has a lot to play for we, because we know what happened in the first couple of months of, of last season when there was so much change in the playing squad. Yeah, uh, I think Dessers will be leading the line on Saturday, Stevie. Yeah, because I think he's the only one that's available and bit at this moment in time. Danilo's not ready, we've seen that. And even at Birmingham, we've seen that he wasn't ready. He'll take a wee while to get up to speed. Serio had a good game last week, I think, against Union. So I think that's fair to say. Finished his goals really well. First one was actually really quite a smart finish. So you would hope that his confidence is up. Um, you just got to hope that when he tries to round the centre back and goalkeeper five times, that he just manages to get his shot away. So, now uh, all joking aside, you do go with him, don't you? I think um, yeah. my team wouldn't yeah. be much different from Joshua. We'd like to see Cortez and and Cherney start in the wings. We'd like to see Lawrence, you know, Red Van coming in at left back. But then there's a, a big onus on Cortez to be better when he's tracking back than he was last week. Um, we've got to tighten those areas up but you know the middle I think Baron Diamandi picks itself and then Proper comes in for me as well next to Suter so yeah I mean I think at this moment in time it does pick itself for that game probably for Kiev as well that might slightly deviate if he, he might decide that he needs another more solid midfielder in there for Kiev I'm not quite sure but um, you know I said this yesterday and I, I still believe it that this can swing quite quickly. At the moment, things are quite negative and quite, you know, maybe downbeat. I don't think that many people are looking forward to, but you go to Tynecastle on Saturday, you get a result. You know, you maybe add a player on top of, you go into a European game and, you know, things can change. The mood, the atmosphere can change really quickly. My mood has certainly changed over the last few days. I said that yesterday as well. Proper came right out of the blue, which was a really nice moment. But he's the right kind of player. Add him to Cherney and yeah, you're starting to get there, Derek. You're starting to feel a lot more positive. 
the only downside is it's coming maybe a lot later than we wanted, but positively you can start to see the jigsaw that Clement has talked about quite a bit come together. So I'm certainly a lot more positive. There's a lot more exciting names out there. There's a lot more links and things like that. And yeah, it's look, it's it's getting to that bit where it's quite fun, isn't it? So mm. um there's definitely more things to get positive about than negative on the playing field at this moment because I think you can start to see it. I think more people will leave as well, Derek. Joshua, we spoke about and we have spoke about this wage restructuring quite a bit and the need to do that. You know, Joshua mentioned it there. I think that's the, the key thing, not only to, you know, the, the departures, it's how much money you're going to save and, and how you can rebalance this squad because it is unbalanced. With, with wages and things like that. But when you consider the guys that have left, Lawrence, Barisic, you know, Goldson, these Lundstrom, are all... You mean. Yeah, Lundstrom, yeah. All big players, you know, and, and, and a lot of money. So um, there's there's a lot there going out and there's a lot coming in now on better structures and that. So it is slowly but surely, I think we're getting there. And I'm certainly more positive we're on the right track. I, I, I don't know about you two, but the, I still think the most important signing Rangers need to make, uh, hopefully will make this summer as a, a, a defensive midfielder because that's something they've lacked for a long time. And a lot of the focus now, I think rightly will be on, okay, Clement's going to have, he's played without wingers for the majority of his time at the club. He's promoted Ross McCausland, who hadn't really been in the first team whatsoever. Prior to that, uh, Abdallah, Seema and Oscar Cortez both had bad injuries. In, in the cup final, you were playing Sterling as a right back and Fabio Silva as a is, is a, certainly not a left midfielder on the wings, right? So let's say you start the season with Cortez and Journey. You've got round pegs and round holes as opposed to what you had uh, last uh, last season. There's question marks, I think, over the midfield. Yes, Barron's looked really good. Everyone knows about the quality of Diomande. But also at points, and we saw this especially, I think, in the, the Birmingham game, when Rangers don't have the right set up in midfield when they maybe don't have when they rely too heavily on Diamandi to do everything, the ball can go long quite a lot, they can lose control of the game the football doesn't always look that pretty so I, th I think signing that number six is something that Rangers have lacked for a long time since Stephen Davis, John Lundstrom was never a real, for me, a natural fit um, certainly in a really high possession team in there because if you want a, a I think a team who can can play through a press. We didn't see that all that often under Clement last season. We know he wants to attack quickly, wants to keep his attackers high, um, wants to play with this number ten and, and and two wingers. That that number six, that deep line midfielder, is that is is going to be a fundamental part. I think of Rangers season, and it's something that they lacked for yeah three four years by now. Yep, uh, I agree. Uh, one player that has been linked, and there's a few comments coming in saying uh, what's happening with uh, Hannibal, the Man United midfielder, uh, Rangers said to be interested in him, was reported, I think, from uh, initially from Tunisian media outlets at Celtic also uh, were keen on him. Um, so it remains to be seen what materialises with that one. Um, but do you agree with that, Stevie? Rangers do need someone of that sort of description in the middle of the park. I think they need a sort of a Barry Ferguson type and enforcer in there that can dictate um, matches. I think Conor Barron will be a great signing. Still think you need a bit of Rangers need a bit of experience in there. Yeah, I've spoken about a six quite a bit, haven't I? So yeah. we we've said that, but yes, I think we need a six. Is it the most important position? It's funny, Joshua, because there's that point. So I would have said yes, but I still think. I still think we're short up front, even with Cherney and with um, Cortez. Cortez. Mm. Jeez, that's yeah. what happens when you have too much water last night, boys, and I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> um, if you've got them wide, I think you, you're okay there, but I still think centrally you need, you need something. There's a star man quality needed somewhere in that front line, I think. Now that's going to be difficult to find. They've been linked with some really big names, some names that we thought were maybe wild, and there seems to be, you know, continued interest in them. So we need to just see where that takes us. And you know, is it a case of waiting for maybe movement on Dessers before a star striker comes in, before a number ten comes in? I think we need to wait and see. But you know, I still think a six. Is, is positive, but I think a 10, especially if you're losing Cantwell and Hadji and Alex Lowry, I think will we'll most likely go out again as well because 
I'm not sure he quite grabbed his opportunity, and I'm only surmising of what I'm seeing at Birmingham and stuff like that. He didn't look didn't look like he properly grasped that. So I think there's work to be done in the spine of the team. If you can get three players in that spine of the team, you know, a six, a ten, maybe somebody else up front, depending on who goes out and stuff. I think you start to look automatically better. The six has always been key. I've spoke about it for a long time. I was really excited about the links to Damian Garcia. I thought that could have been a really positive move. They've been linked with a few more um, in the last couple of days, in the last couple of weeks. It'll have been quite exciting. Um, but I think that, yeah, there's still work to be done. But it's not, it's starting to get to the point now, Derek, where you're all of a sudden not going, well, we need six. Now it's, if you can get three really good key players, you're starting to yeah. knit it all together. So it is coming together, I think, slowly but surely. Um, and I think what Joshua says about a six being key to dictating, it's maybe what I spoke about with you quite a bit this week, about how easily we've been played apart by one pass and things like that. And Joshua will know more about this from his kind of like reviews and stat stuff and things like that. I think we've been too open and too easy to play against at times where one pass against Man United, against Birmingham, against Union, has completely undone the team. So would a six then knit that together positionally? Would there be a lot tighter? Would there be a lot more robust and a lot more kind of solid in that? I think possibly they might be. So it's um, it's certainly a key move and a, and a key area. Is it more key than getting a star man type up front? Just depends what way you look at it, doesn't it? It depends what way you look at your team and, and what you believe is the key. It's but what Philip Clement believes is ultimately going to be ultimately going to be what, what's decided in there. But I do think there's business to be done, absolutely. Yeah, you've got to trust the manager and uh, the targets that are bringing in. That, um, they, hopefully they'll hit the ground running. Uh, some concerns over right back, Joshua, um, about, uh, of course, James Tavney. A lot of noise with his future. Mm-hmm. Uh, looked a tad off the pace, it's fair to say. It looks like someone in the manager did touch on this um, recently where um, he says he... he yeah, he's sort of um, behind the, the group. He's not. He's not played that much uh, football, of course. Um, is that a concern for you heading to Tyne Castle? There's some suggestions that um, Dujon Sterling, who missed the game at the weekend, if he's fit, should he come in and, and play there? What's your thinking behind that? Yeah, it's a big decision, obviously, isn't it? Because the noise yeah. about Tavernier has been no secret. It's been pretty, pretty plain and obvious, I think, for a number of weeks uh, by this point. But also, he remains the club captain he, he still de- he deserves a lot of respect um absolutely and Clement has to manage that really well he wasn't lying when he said obviously that the only player he didn't want to sell this summer or wouldn't sell under any real circumstances because he thought that no club would match the expectation is Jack Butland and I think that comment said a lot do John Sterling the, the manager Clement was asked about it uh, after the Berlin game wasn't he and he said that which was a really interesting comment he said that um Sterling had, had taken part in what was a third of pre-season and that was three times more than he'd done in any previous year, which I thought was a, a pretty revealing uh, comment. He did he did have a lot of injuries last season, but he also did play a lot of games. It's not as if he broke down every couple of games. And I think what was an important point to notice is, is that when you are playing in so many different positions, for example, he's a right winger at points and he, he's, you know, he's high intensity runs the whole game, didn't really play it right back whatsoever, played in midfield. And the conditioning for all these type of different positions, again, is different as Clement uh, reiterated at different points of the season. But with all that said, you don't go into the the, the season at the moment if you're looking at Rangers right back options and think it's clear who's going to play, it's clear who's going to be available and you can guarantee yet that Sterling is going to be available for 50 games a season as, as James Tavernier has been for eight or nine years at Ibrox so far. Leon King obviously looks like you're the, the, the player behind those two um, at the moment, having not been able to really cement a place at a centre back. But that is a, I think that is a concern going into Saturday for Rangers because Tavenier obviously was was at fault for for one of one or two of the goals that the penalty, the, the third goal, I think the Union scored on on the day. We know I, I think against Man United that Sterling had had a good game, but that question of injury until it's been answered, until he plays consistently, is going to be. Is going to be there, Derek, and it's one that that Clement, you know, that we, we we've heard a lot about how preseason, how different changes here or there are going to be able to aid these injury concerns, and and I guess they're going to have to. The proof is going to be in, in what we see over the next number of months, because what is obviously clear and obvious is that Rangers can't have the type of injury situation they've had over the last three seasons if they hope to to make this one any different. 
Yeah, uh, Dana Life says, uh, is Tav uh, going or is that him staying, lads? Well, um, Trabs Onspur haven't met Rangers' valuation, so he's, he's still a, a Rangers player at this moment in time. Is that a concern, though, Stevie, Tav's form heading into this game at the weekend? Yeah, um, I think it's definitely a concern when you've seen how off the pace he looked and the question is, and we've spoke about it, you know, you, you start to worry as his leg's gone or is it a case of being, you know, he's just getting up to speed and he's been really tired and overplayed the last six months. So these excuses or kind of context that's made for him, is that the case or is it just the fact that he's completely off the boil? We're going to find out, aren't we? Because he will play on Saturday. Um, and then, you know, we've got a big European game. So we're going to find out where Tav is. Teams will target him. So we'll find out quite quickly as well. But it's going to be difficult because I think you might need, you might need Leon King, you might need Leon Balogun maybe to, to cover, depending on. I don't think Tav can possibly do two 90 minutes Saturday and Tuesday. So where is Sterling? Is he going to be fit? If last week was a precaution with his muscles and stuff like that, then, you know, he should be fine for Saturday. But... It's just a bit of a wait and see. Is Tavernier a, a concern for me? He was a concern for me at the close of last season, Derek. He spoke about it quite a lot, quite vocally about it. Um, do I think Tavernier will still be here at the end of the window? I'm not entirely sure. So I still think that's a, a big question mark. And then if you do lose him, you know, like Joshua says, can you really rely on Sterling? We all want him to play there. We all want him to be first choice, I think, probably. But, you know, until Joshua, as Joshua says, until he point he, he plays that consistent level of games, you're going to be worried about that. But mm-hmm. I think to have starts on Saturday, I think that most likely Hearts will go at him. They'll try and have a, a go at him. But we just need to hope that he's he's on his game. And we've seen it before. Tav can certainly rise to the occasion and stuff like that. But he's had a bit of problem at Tynecastle before, hasn't he? Under Warburton, under. Geo under previous managers, he, he wasn't great in the three three game at the end of last season. Um, in fact, he was really poor that day. So it's a, it's a worry for me, uh, James Tavernier definitely. But we'll just need to deal with it on the day and hope that we can get through it. Yep, uh, a lot of questions asking if Sterling is fit. We'll get a, a fitness update when we speak to the manager tomorrow. Uh, first proper press conference of the season ahead of the, the season opener uh, at Tynecastle on Saturday, 12.30 kickoff for that one. Um, if there's any transfer news to break over the course of the day, folks, keep your eyes peeled on our social media channels uh, or YouTube and on the website as well. Um, uh, no doubt, uh, given the... the, the uh, Rangers uh, in recent weeks, uh, they'll uh, announce a signing or uh, rumours will start um, emerging once we come off air. But uh, yeah, plenty to um, consume over on the website just now, folks. And uh, if you are on WhatsApp as well, you can uh, follow all the latest Rangers news on there. Uh, head over to the link, which is in the scri- description below this video to join us on WhatsApp. Right. Do us there. Big thanks to Joshua and to Stevie as well. Um, I'm off tomorrow, so uh, I'll be Joshua on the hockey. So, uh, yeah, uh, enjoy your weekend, folks. Hopefully, your team wins on Saturday, and I'll speak to you next week. Bye for now.